Hi, this is Representative Rachel Roberts coming to you today from our state capitol. I'm down here today working on correspondence with constituents, but I also wanted to take this time to answer some of the most frequently asked questions that I'm hearing from people in District 67, um, specifically questions around COVID-19, moving from healthy at home to healthy at work. So I hope you find some of this information helpful. You can find more info and links and anything else you might need at kycovid 19 Dot ky dot gov. You can even translate most of the pages there. Para que yo sé ustedes que hablan español, esta información se puede encontrar en español en kycovid19.ky.gov. Mantenerse a salvo y estar bien. So the main questions I'm getting right now are around the reopening of the state. What it looks like to reopen, what the phase in approach is, um, how are we doing on testing? Can I get a test? And how businesses that are about to reopen can get the PPE they need and meet the health um, requirements. And then just a general sort of healthcare update. So let's get started. The benchmark criteria for Kentucky are the same as what are advised by the CDC and the White House, and they include days where cases are decreasing. We are seeing that plateau. We are seeing our overall number of cases not continue to rise, uh, even though we are doing so much more testing now than we have been able to do up until this point. I'm gonna talk more about testing in Northern Kentucky in just a moment. Uh, people need to have access to PPE, which was really hard to come by just a few weeks back, but we're finding ways around that. We have some amazing companies in Kentucky that are actually becoming manufacturers for these things. So we have access to that now. Uh, the ability to protect at-risk populations, um, which you know, you're seeing in our nursing home and elder care facilities right now is, is such a critical issue. Um, that we continue to socially distance that our hospitals and medical facilities are prepared to handle the capacity of any future possible spikes, God forbid that should happen. And then, you know, that we are all continuing to pray for and support and uh, cheer on our scientists and our doctors that they might be able to come up with treatments now and a vaccine in the very near future. So as we are starting to hit these benchmarks, um, we're starting to reopen. And one of the big ones is testing. So in Northern Kentucky, we actually have a lot of testing already in Northern Kentucky. Um, what we haven't had consistently is testing for anyone who wants to test, even if they don't have any symptoms. That's what's coming for four days next week. You can see on the slide here that May 11th through 15th, anybody that wants to test can get one um, and they'll get that by making the phone call, making an appointment and going in. Now, if you have symptoms, you have lots of options for getting tested in Northern Kentucky through St. Elizabeth, through Bluegrass, Urgent Care, the Christ Hospital and Health Point Family Care. Um, those are all uh, up and running and places that will test people who have symptoms. And at least for Bluegrass who I've spoken with, I know the way their system works is that you call, you speak to someone for intake, they're gonna set up an appointment with you with a healthcare provider, a teleconference um, call, and then you'll go at your prescribed time, and I believe they meet you out in the parking lot and administer the test there, so it's as low contact as possible. So again, big takeaways, if you wanna test next week but you're asymptomatic, call the 1-800 number listed here, get yourself an appointment. If you have symptoms, go to any of these other outlets anytime to um, set yourself up for a test. Let's talk about what it looks like to reopen Kentucky now that we're starting to hit those benchmarks. And the main thing here is to be slow and steady and smart. So we're reopening in a phased in approach where we reopen certain industries one at a time or in sort of groups at a time so that we can make sure that we don't see a spike after opening one of these. So the first one actually started last week. It was the reopening of some of our healthcare provider systems, things like imaging and doctor's offices and um, dentist offices, and those things have already begun. Now we're starting to reopen manufacturing, construction, car dealerships, um, grooming, which I know my animals will appreciate, uh, photography, uh, and then office-based businesses and horse racing, but sadly with no fans. And offices are to open at 50% capacity or less. Any of these businesses, even though they're listed here and they can reopen on May 11th, they still have to meet the criteria of these 10 rules and any other industry-specific guidance that is passed on to them through their various associations or industry groups. If people are working from home successfully, keep them working from home. 
healthy at home is still the best way to keep the curve as flat as possible. If people are coming back to work, do it in a phased in approach. You will need to check temperatures and symptom checks. And if someone shows up with symptoms, then helping them find access to a test and then making sure that anyone they might have come in contact with is aware of that. We're going to need to wear masks and have PPE. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to get those things. Closing common areas, practicing social distance, you can read the rest of these here, but all of these have to be in place before you can reopen. May 20th, we'll see the reopening of retail stores and our houses of worship. Now keep in mind that these are dates that these businesses are permitted to reopen, but they have to have the 10 rules in place, the 10 things that um, will keep us all safe, and they don't have to reopen on those dates if they don't feel like they can do so safely for their congregation, for instance, or for their customers, or their clients, or their employees. Phase two is starting on May 22nd. That's when we'll see the reopening of restaurants. Um, with stipulations of 33% capacity inside and 100% um, capacity outside. June 1st is when movie theaters and fitness centers will reopen. And I'll just tell you personally, my business is a yoga studio, so I would be able to reopen on June 1st under fitness centers. I, personally, I haven't decided if we're going to reopen on that date or not. If the recommendations are still to wear masks, when we're you know, around other people, I don't know that I would feel like it was wise to reopen my personal business at that moment. That's just me because I teach a very breath-centered yoga practice and asking people to focus on the breath while wearing a mask can be really anxiety producing for some people. So that might not be the right thing for my business. And I just tell you that as an example of even though I could open that day, I still might not. And I haven't made my mind up yet. I'm gonna wait till we get a little bit closer and then see if I think we can do it wisely. June 11th is when campgrounds can open. June 15th is a huge day because that's when we'll start to reopen child care centers and youth sports um, and low touch and outdoor sporting events. Now child care, I actually right before filming this just came from the Head Start program here in Newport and was talking to them about the you know, unique challenges they're gonna be facing of trying to get kids to social distance and they'll need to come back in a phased in approach. And so how do you choose which families come back first and how do you prioritize so that you know, as many people can get back to work as possible because so many of us can't get back to work until childcare is put into place. So June 15th is a huge day. It's a complicated day. Um, you know, do what you can with those who will provide your childcare just to, you know, help them ramp up. If you have things you could donate to them PPE wise, I'm sure that would be very appreciated. Now, if your business wasn't listed here, or you feel like you could safely open your business before the date that your business is listed in, that's your chance to submit your own proposal. And you can see some of the notes here, but one of the things is no business actually has to submit a proposal. This is just if you want to open earlier or you um, don't feel like your business has, you know, the bucket that your business would fall in has been addressed yet. So this is a chance for you to talk about how you would meet those 10 rules and any other things you think you need to have for your business, um, an opportunity to ensure that your voice is heard and that you uh, have that plan in place. The phone number in the bottom right corner, 833-KY-SAFER, that's an important phone number. That's the phone number for employees and staff to call if they don't feel like their workplace is safe. If you need PPE to reopen your business, uh, our Kentucky distilleries are making hand sanitizer and you can get that now at kyhandsanitizer.com. I actually just ordered from these guys. I got two gallons of hand sanitizer. It's kind of fun. It comes in like sort of moonshine bottles, um, but that will be enough to get me started when it's time for me to reopen my business. Mask gloves, thermometers, face shields, those kinds of things, which can be hard to get right now or hard to get in in a, in a, in a hurry. Um, the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce has a stock of those, so you can order directly from them and you might be able to get them through them much faster than your other suppliers. Let's talk about healthcare for a moment. May is Mental Health Care Month, and I just really wanted to take a moment to talk to each of you about this moment in time when we are all feeling more isolated than we're used to, when we're all feeling more anxiety, and in some cases, fear than we would normally. I know I'm feeling a lot of that um, and a lot of stress, and so what I am trying to do is remember to take time for myself, to get outside, to exercise, to try and eat well, I'm um, really trying to carve out time for sort of Zoom calls with my girlfriends and with my family, um, trying to really enjoy the extra time that I get with my husband. So don't isolate yourself. Connect with those people in your life that you love and that you enjoy. 
take a break from social media and from the news, and then try to preserve your daily routine as much as you possibly can. And look out for one another right now. Check in on your friends and family. You know, one of the main ways that we comfort each other is not available to us right now. We can't you know, hug our friends and family. We can't hold someone's hand in their moment of need, but we can still call and share a kind word. We can still make eye contact with a stranger when we're out walking or when we're at the grocery store and never doubt the power of that, of just making eye contact with someone. That might be the first time in that day or that week that person feels like someone else has actually seen them. And it's a reminder that we are going through the shared experience right now. As far as healthcare, healthcare goes, um, this is a chance for me to just tell you, if you are sick, if you are injured, go to the doctor, call your physician. Our hospitals have met this test right now, and we have all done such a good job of flattening the curve that there is capacity. If you are injured, go to the ER. If you are sick, call your physician. And lastly, watch the governor's 5 p.m. updates. It's where you're gonna get the most up-to-date information. It's the best resource for all of us right now. All right, thanks for watching. I hope some of this was useful to you. Remember, you can find lots more information and all of the up-to-date information at KY covid19.ky.gov. Until we talk again, take care of one another, be kind to one another, be well. Thanks.